Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be in the world. Thank you for watching the video today. I'm going to talk about when there is a need for medication. So when people are living through their journey of dementia, it's very unique, it's dynamic, everybody's different. Sometimes you may need medication, other times you don't. Some people may choose medication, other people might not. So many, a number of years ago, I was involved in the UK with the government on something called Always a Last Resort. And this came about because we discovered that we were over prescribing antipsychotic medicine to people living with dementia in nursing homes. And of course, when you over prescribing medication like that, it leads to death. So there was an inquiry with the government and we kind of put this tool together, this document called Always a Last Resort. And so now, you know, after years of working in the field of dementia, my thinking is always, what can we do before we use medication? And what I'm talking about here is medication for helping people get through the behavioural aspect of their journey, the behavioural and psychological symptoms of dementia, BPSD. What I like to use are non-pharmacological, non easy for me to say, non-pharmacological interventions. Only go to medication as a last resort, but also as part of a holistic treatment care plan. Never should medication be used alone. We should always use it as part of a therapeutic program, a therapeutic treatment and therapy plan. So things like antidepressants and antipsychotics, there, the, there may be a use and there may be a need, but it, it's kind of working out when that need is how we use it, how much of it and for how long. So let's take antidepressants, for, for example. We should never use an antidepressant on its own. It should always be accompanied by something such as cognitive behaviour therapy, neuro-linguistic programming or some other kind of psychotherapy. It shouldn't just be given and take this medication and then your mood will change. We've got to find out what's causing it in the first place. So if your mood has changed and you're feeling very low, you're feeling depressed, why? Why? We need to find out why. Not just give the medication so that it deals with it, because it doesn't deal with it. It just deals with it at a surface level, at a conscious level, not at the, the, the base level. We need to know exactly what it is that's, that's triggered it, what is causing it. And then we can use the right approach, the right technique and the right intervention, along with a low dose of antidepressant for a short space of time. So what I'm saying here is that an antidepressant should be used as an adjunct to treatment. OK, not a standalone first line treatment. Things like, OK, I'm feeling down, I'm feeling depressed. Let's look at your diet. Let's look at exercise. Keep fit, get moving, get motivated, go for walks, work out in the gym. Do all those kind of things, because that is something that we know through research and clinical practice alleviates some of the symptoms of depression. So we want to in include that. We want to maybe include cognitive behaviour therapy so that we can rewire the thought processes after establishing what is causing it in the first place. And of course, many people who are living with dementia are saddened because they can't remember a certain thing. They can't remember how to do something. They can't remember somebody's name. They can't remember how to get to a certain place. And that feeds into low mood. So we can address that by rewiring those thought processes. Does it really matter if I can't remember his name? I know him. He knows me. 
doesn't really matter, does it? Um, don't worry about being embarrassed. Don't worry about how um, rude it might be. Just because you can't remember this person's name, it's okay. It's okay to let that go. It's okay not to be able to find your way around somewhere, to get lost. I do it all the time. I'm constantly getting lost. If I didn't have a satellite nav navigation system in my, in my car and didn't have Siri and the satellite navigation system and the maps in my phone, I wouldn't be going anywhere. I'd be, I'd be totally lost. So, and I don't worry about that because I think, well, that's me. That's, that's me. That's who I am. People know I'll get lost. So don't let those things get on top of you. Find a way in which we can solve that problem. Find a different way, a different approach, a different technique. Antipsychotic medicines. Now, these are very, very dangerous medicines. And I avoid them like the plague for as long as possible. So only when... The behaviour has, has, has got to a point where nothing else works. No intervention, no strategy, no non-pharmacological non uh, intervention works. Cognitive behaviour therapy isn't working, NLP isn't working, hypnotherapy, hypnopsychotherapy, psychotherapy isn't working. These modalities are not working. So maybe we now need a small dose of antipsychotic just to take the edge off just to make that person accessible to other forms of therapy and you know if we use things like the sundowning tool that can help reduce people's behavior before it starts but if they're already sundowning then using that tool can help um, manage and i know you i don't use the word manage lightly you know i don't like using that word because we're not managing people we're supporting them so that's um the time for medication is when we've we've exhausted all other avenues and we need a little bit of help to maybe kick start those other avenues again maybe support the hypnotherapy the hypnopsychotherapy the neuropsychotherapy cognitive behavior therapy whatever kind of therapy we're doing whatever kind of treatment plan we have Maybe we need a little bit of medication just to take the edge off and to make the situation more accessible. So think about, you know, the, the mood. What is always, always, always what is causing it? That has to be the thing that we find the answer to. Not just give a pill, prescribe a medication and just get on with it. We want to find out where the problem is. Why is there a problem? What's causing it? What's triggered it? And then how can we best support it? So it's always good when you go to see your doctor, whether it's your primary physician, your GP, whether it's your nurse practitioner, whether it's your clinical dementia specialist, your neurologist, whoever it might be that you are going to talk about or, or going to talk with, then make sure you're armed with the facts. So think about the ABC, antecedent, behaviour and consequence. So I want you to be very specific about what was happening beforehand, before James decided to get aggressive, before James became verbally aggressive, before James pushed somebody out of the way, threw something, screamed, shouted, what was happening beforehand? Let's try and find a trigger because if we can find a trigger we might be able to remove those triggers so therefore we don't need a medication and then what was the behavior specific be specific about the behavior what was it because depending on the behavior and depending on the type of dementia will determine what medication is is selected is chosen so be specific in the behavior and then what was the consequence? What happened afterwards? What happened because of that behaviour? Did somebody get hurt? Was somebody upset? Was somebody sad? You know, de describe it so that when you go and see the person that you're going to help, the clinician that's going to help you, then um, you're armed with the facts. Okay? 
So that's what I wanted to say today. Thank you for listening to me. Share, share and share this video um, with everybody. Get people to subscribe to my YouTube channel. The more people I can reach throughout the world, the better it is for everybody because learning more and more about dementia every single day and I want to be able to share that and I want to be able to share my clinical knowledge and my experience too. So get people to subscribe to this YouTube channel, uh, share my videos with them, find me on Facebook, follow me, like me, same on Instagram, you can find me on TikTok as well and remember, right, you know what I'm going to say don't you? Yeah, you do. That's right. Dump the soda. Have a great weekend, guys. And a great week. Bye now.